Hey everyone, it's Casual, and I'm back to tell you everything you need to know about comparators. The first and most simple thing that a comparator can be used for is to maintain a signal strength. In this example, I lined up three comparators in line. A signal strength of 14 is going in, and the same 14 is coming out. The next use for a comparator is to do what it's called, compare. Here we have a signal strength of 12 going into a comparator, and we'll run another signal strength into the side. It compares these two strengths, and if the signal from the side is greater than the one coming in, then the comparator won't let a line run through it. Here I'm supplying 11, which is less than 12. Here's 12, which is equal, and it still doesn't turn the comparator off. But if we boost this signal to 13, the comparator flips off, and the signal doesn't go through it. Here we're going to look at a different mode that the comparator is capable of. Right now we have a 12 going in and a 10 on the side, and the signal isn't being interrupted because 10 is less than 12. But if we toggle this into subtract mode by right clicking on it, the signal values will subtract and we'll get an output that's equal to the difference. In this case, 12 minus 10 results in a signal strength of 2. Here's a simple setup that shows that the comparator can compare signals coming in from both sides. We'll feed in a signal strength of 12 with a 4 on the side and a 2 on the other side. You might think this subtracts both numbers, 12 minus 2 minus 4, to get 6, but what it does is it picks the greater of the two numbers in the sides. So in this case we're going to see 12 minus 4 equals 8. Comparators can also be used to measure the fullness of a container. In this chest we have three stacks of cobblestone, which doesn't fill the chest enough to light the lamp. But if we add a fourth stack, it increases the redstone output to three and is enough to light the lamp. The next example just shows that a comparator can also measure through a wall. You can place one block between the comparator and the container, and the comparator will still be able to pull a signal. Now that you know the basic functions of the comparator, we'll look at a couple practical examples. Here we have an example of a redstone extender. The signal goes through the comparator in a loop and slowly decays over time. This is the same extender that we used in our 2x2 piston door tutorial. In the next example, we have an automatic dispenser that will shoot arrows whenever there are arrows in the dispenser. The comparator pulls a signal from the dispenser, and if anything's in it, it sends a signal around through a repeater and into the side of the comparator. It also loops that signal back to the dispenser so that it can shoot the arrows. You can see more about this in our automatic dropper tutorial. Here we have an example of an item collection system. Whenever there's anything in the hopper minecart, it'll pause to empty its contents when it reaches the end of the rail. Once the hopper minecart is empty, it goes back on its way. It does this by pulling a comparator signal out of the hopper to test if anything is running through the hopper. The comparator sends a signal to the redstone torch which gets toggled. The signal goes through a repeater and turns on and off the powered rail underneath the hopper minecart. The blocks that can have a signal pulled from them include the furnace, blast furnace, smoker, brewing stand, hopper, hopper minecart on top of a detector rail, dispenser, dropper, chest, trap chest, minecart chest on top of a detector rail, barrel, shulker box, a large chest and a large trap chest, beehive, bee nest, cake, cauldron, composter, the daylight sensor, end portal frame, item frame, jukebox, lectern, target, command block, and the skulk sensor which will be new to Minecraft 1.17. We mentioned that a comparator pulls a signal out of a container based on its fullness, but here are a couple examples of non-containers that can output a redstone signal. First we have the daylight sensor. This puts a signal out based on the light level that it receives. We have an ender frame, which produces a signal whenever an eye of ender is put into it. An item frame, which shows no signal when there's no item in it, and a signal strength depending on the position that the item is rotated. The jukebox puts out a signal whenever there's a record placed into it. The lectern outputs a signal based on the page you're reading out of the total number of pages in the book. So in this book of 15 pages, if we flip to page 6, 
the output signal will be 6 as well. The target block puts out a signal based on the accuracy of your shot. So if we shoot the edge, we'll see that we get an output signal of 1, and if we shoot closer to the center, we get an output signal of 13. The max is 15. The command block puts out a signal strength based on the number of successful commands that it sent in its last run, and the skulk sensor will put out a signal based on how close a noise source is to the sensor. Thanks for following along as we talked about comparators today. If you learned anything new, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell for notifications. Thanks, we'll catch you next time.